Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm really excited because I'm going to continue the videos with augmented reality. In the previous video, I showed you how to implement drawing functionality with augmented reality. So what I'm going to be doing in this video is we're going to be adding functionality to that example by adding multi-touch support. So you guys can see the example that basically shows you how you can actually draw instead of using one finger, you can use multiple fingers. I'm also going to walk you through line settings, which is a new scriptable object that I added to control some of the settings on the line, such as the width of the line, such as the color of the line, and additional settings. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the code. We're gonna be looking at the comparison between the previous version versus the new version. And I'm also going to be explaining everything step by step. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. All right, guys, so I've been making a lot of changes to this and I wanna show you the results. So this is me running on my iPhone after making changes for multi-line support. So. Here you can see that I'm drawing, you know, one line and the index here is the finger that I have pressed. So that one is index zero. And in this case, I'm gonna try two fingers. You guys can see we're getting a zero and one, zero and one. That means that I'm holding both of my fingers to actually draw. And then I'm gonna try a third finger to see if that still works. You can see we get zero, one and two. And everything is working so far. So I'm gonna try, let's go ahead and try four fingers. You can see how I am making lines. Four lines at the same time. Vertical lines, horizontal lines, and yeah, and everything is working fine. So what I wanna show you today, it's basically what I did to make changes from the previous version that I showed you on the previous video where I show you how to implement drawing support for augmented reality. In this case, we're going to be adding and changing the implementation from single line support to multiple touch support. So I'm just gonna go ahead and show you some of the code changes. I was debating whether to you know, do everything from scratch or just show you the code and you guys can see it and get it from GitHub as well. So just know this is going to go live tomorrow on GitHub so you guys can get it for free or you can get it tonight and today from, from, from my Patreon, which is going to be, it's already available. I already checked these changes to GitHub, but it's currently private. So. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and show you the AR Draw Manager. You guys saw that on the previous video. I show you how this was implemented. The difference between that video and this video is that we don't have that many options anymore here. It's actually super clean. I made a lot of refactoring. I started creating a line setting, which is a scriptable object, and that one holds all the different settings about a line. And I also moved some of the properties in here for creating a line render to an AR line. So this class is gonna be responsible for, you know, for actually creating a line render, updating the points on the line render, creating points, and then this line is going to, uh, this object is going to be responsible for holding the settings. I'm still doing anchors and the, uh, the AR draw manager is the one responsible for, for actually, you know, combining the, uh, adding the anchors to the, to the manager, which I'm using the AR anchor manager. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and, and take a look at some of the changes that I made in here. So it's gonna go ahead and look at the changes. So if we look at the previous changes, and I'm gonna make this bigger so you guys can see it. You know how I had way too much going on in here, right? Like I had distance from the camera was here and now you don't see it. And it's mainly because that is a setting and that went into the line settings, which is, again, is going to be a scriptable object. I also have a default color, color material that's going to be the default line material that you saw in the video, that's the white color, and you can change that as well, but that's, you know, it's stored in the line settings. The corner vertices, end cap vertices, that all went into that. Allow simplification, some of these settings went into that. And in, in other words, I just made a lot of refactoring, move a lot of the stuff to line settings. If we go down here and, you know, the same thing with some of these variables, I just move them around. I also refactor some of the implementation on how we do the draw and touch, draw and mouse, because I'm now using a dictionary to store some of the, the lines that I'm, that I'm actually creating, and I'm gonna show you how that works. But anyways, I just made a lot of changes you guys can see if you look at this side to side. The other you know, point that I wanted to show you here, and I'm gonna go through all the code. This is just you know, a high level diff so that you guys can see. I, I was making changes on the, I actually made changes to the draw and touch. This one was only for one single, basically a single finger. You guys can see I'm using index zero. So I'm only getting the first touch. So if you're touching the screen with multiple fingers, this is never gonna capture the second finger. 
So, so this work, if you want to use that version, it works. The new version is more, you know, dynamic. I can, I can tell it to use one finger. I can tell it to use multiple fingers, which is what I'm going to show you in here. You guys can see I'm using touch count. Is it greater than one? And if it is, I'm using, I'm going to allow multi-touch as long as the line, line settings have that feature enabled. And then if it has a feature enabled, I'm going to get multiple touches, which is going to give me the touch count. Otherwise, I'm just going to use one, which is going to be a single touch. So this change to multi-touch support, which is what you see here, and, and everything else is, this is basically the implementation for drawing with a mouse. And again, a lot of these adding a point, updating, a, adding a line render, and, and some of this information went into the AR line. So let me, let me go ahead and walk you through this, and then I'm going to walk you through all the different classes as well. So let's go ahead and go into Draw Manager. So if you look at uh, the draw manager, you're going to see line settings, right? So that one, I'm going to show you that as well, which that is under settings. And that one is a scriptable object. It actually keeps things a lot cleaner. And if you want to implement, you know, more advanced drawing capability, what you can do is you can create multiple, basically multiple line, line setting files. And then each line settings file is going to hold the settings. For instance, if you wanted to have one line settings file that has the color white, one of them has the color red, or perhaps one has uh, a particular type of uh, line width, you can change it in here, and then the other one has a, a smaller one, then this is gonna allow you to basically swap that very easily. So you can see most of this is just your settings, and if we go into Unity, you're gonna see that I now have what's called line settings, it's a folder, and this is a scriptable object. We can now store what the tag name, you know, of the line render is going to be, I can also change the color here, which is cool because I have a line picker and everything is consolidated into the scriptable object, the width, the start width, the end width of the line, distance from the camera, because we're using AR, you want to know, you know, how much of a distance between the camera and the line you're going to be having. And then the default material corner already says tolerance options, which is going to allow you to simplify lines if you wanted to use those, those settings. And the one that is really important is going to be the allow multi-touch support. So if you want to use single, basically one finger, just how I had it previously, you can uncheck this. Or if you want to use and allow multiple touches, then you can enable that. So pretty cool. Like, and if you want to basically associate that with the AR drawing manager, you can go into my the AR session origin and then go into AR draw manager. And in the draw manager, all you have to do is just you know drag and drop the scriptable scriptable object into the line settings. So I could create another one if I wanted to and then drop it in, that, that will work. But any, nothing else in here changed other than I move all those variables to the scriptable object. So let's go ahead and go back here. Okay, so now that you know that we have all of these options in here, you can also, the other thing that I wanted to mention, you can also create a, a line setting by right clicking in the project area and then create, and then click on create line settings. That's going to create that file as well. So that's what I'm doing in here for the menu name. And then again, all the variables are here. So let's go ahead and go back into the AR Draw Manager. So the first thing that I do is I move everything in here. This is serializable so that we can associate it. I still have the on draw anchor manager still applicable air air camera. I didn't move it, still, you know, part of the AR AR Draw Manager. Anchors are still part of that. And then this is something new because I need to keep track of what fingers go with which lines. So that's why I created a dictionary. This is gonna be index space. So if you're holding the first finger, it's gonna be index zero. If you have two fingers, it's going to be, you know, index zero and one. And the fingers don't have indexes that are unique. It's just based on the, the sequence of what you touch the screen. So if I'm touching the screen with my thumb finger, that's gonna be the, the you know, the first index. And if I'm talking, if I'm touching it with my index finger, and that's the first time, that's gonna be zero index. So they're not unique per finger, it's just based on sequence. Airline is another class that I created. So if we go, if we go to that, you can see that I moved a lot of the variables that I had on the other one because this now needs to be attached per finger. So I have a position count, I have you know same implementation that I had before. And the reason why I'm passing in here the line settings in the constructor is because some of these implementation requires some of the settings that I now move to, some of the variables that I now move to settings. So for instance, like if you look at the minimum distance between a new point, which is how we calculate, you know, at what point do we draw a new point, then that also comes from settings. 
the same thing with tolerance settings it's you know all coming from that and then add new line render that also has some of the settings that i have in the line render in the line settings so you can see that here so a lot cleaner than it was before so if we go back here that's what this dictionary is it's going to be associating uh, basically a touch with the error line and then this is just so that i know this is the same uh, the same implementation i have before to tell the system at what point the experience started so that we can start drawing. This is a little bit cleaner because I don't have all the checks for touches and also for mouse. So I'm just saying, okay, if I'm not in the editor, I'm gonna touch. If I am in, if I am in the editor, I'm going to be drawing with the mouse. That way I can, you know, I can debug it with my mouse if I don't wanna build it to the device. So the other thing that I wanted to show you here is the draw on touch. So like I said, when we were looking at the diff, the tab count now, it's not always going to be, I'm, I'm actually making this so that I can, you know, I can check for multiple touches. So if the touch count is greater than one and the setting tells me that I'm going to be allowing multi-touch, then I'm gonna get the, the touch count, you know, whatever that number is, as long as it's greater than one. So if I'm touching with four fingers, then this number is going to come, you know, with multiple, more than one. And if I'm touching, if otherwise it's gonna be set to one, meaning that we're only going to allow one finger touch. And then because I'm doing multi-touches, I'm going to be using a for loop. So we're just basically iterating through every single one of those tab counts, getting the touch based on the index. This implementation is the same that I had before. I'm just basically getting some settings from the line settings. And of course I'm using the index here instead of zero, which is what I had before. And some of the things that I added here is I'm doing, I'm not only capturing the, the touch begin, which is, you know, when you start touching the screen, but I'm also determining if you move your finger and also if the finger is stationary. I, I tried this with just move and it didn't look right. So I ended up just doing move and also stationary and that actually makes it work more fluid. So that's what I'm doing that here. It works really well. I, you know, I tested it thoroughly. And then also the touch phase ended, that's another thing that I do. So if we go into the touch phase begin, which is when you start touching the screen, we're still gonna be invoking the, the Unity event. I'm still gonna be creating an anchor that's still applicable. And I'm adding, I'm adding that anchor to you know, the list of anchors. And the other thing that I'm, I'm also doing now, which is, which is something that I wasn't doing before, is I'm creating an AR line, right? Because we need to know, you know, we need to create a line render. We need to update the points. So, at this point, I'm just basically touching the screen. So I'm just going to create an instance of line. I'm going to be adding that instance of line to my dictionary, but I need to know what the finger, basically what the finger ID is. And then I'm also going to be passing the line to my dictionary. So the key on the dictionary is going to be the finger ID. The value is going to be my line. And then I'm just saying, okay, line, now that I create a line, I'm going to be calling my public method to add a line render. I'm going to be passing in the transform the anchor. The reason why I'm passing in the transform and the anchor as well, which in this case we only need the anchor, is because when I'm using my mouse, I'm not gonna be, at the, I'm not gonna have an anchor, so I'm just going to be using the transform, which in this case is gonna be the AR draw manager, which in that case is gonna be the AR session origin, which is, you know, what this is attached to. But for now, this doesn't matter. I could have just done null and that would have worked, but I just wanted to keep it clean. So just passing that into the line render, it's gonna create a line render. And once I have a line render created, I'm just gonna check, okay, if the finger was touched, let's say that we're, you know, we're drawing with my index finger and I move that finger around. So at this point, we already have a line render. Then at this point, I'm gonna know, okay, I already have index zero, which is my index finger. And I'm gonna be adding a new point, which is gonna be the new touch, posi the touch position that I have and the new touch position. And then when I, when I basically finish touching the screen, I'm gonna lift my finger. I'm gonna remove the, the finger ID from the dictionary because if I want to touch it with a new finger, I want to make sure that, you know, if I'm starting over, then the finger ID, it's going to be unique in that dictionary. So I want to make sure that the dictionary always stay clean. So I know that that was a lot, but you know, this code is available on GitHub. And if you have questions, just let me know in the comments. The draw mouse is basically a similar implementation that I had here. I just have to make some changes. I still get the mouse position. I still, you know, capturing the mouse, you know, calling on draw. The difference is this part, right? So I'm saying, okay, as long as I have a key in my lines, then I know that I have a, I, I can actually create a point. So that means that I already have a line render created. If, if the keys in the dictionary are zero, 
that means that I haven't created a line render. So I'm just going to be, you know, doing the same implementation that I did above it. So this is a little bit different than the other one, other one because I'm using the mouse. But as soon as I let go of the mouse, basically I'm not holding a click, then I'm going to be removing the removing that index, which in this case, it's all, we're not going to have multiple mouse mouses. It's going to be only one. So that's why I'm always doing zero. But in here, I'm, I'm passing in the finger ID. So like I said, this works for the, the Unity editor. So if I go here and hit play, I wanted to make sure that I didn't break that feature because I want you guys to be able to, you know, draw in here and do anything that you like. And if you wanted to go here, let's say you wanted to change the width and, and the start width and the end width, you can also do that as well. So draw and touch, that's how it was implemented. Draw and mouse, that's how that was implemented. These methods, I haven't implemented them yet. I mean, they, they are implemented, but they're not being called from anywhere. So I'm going to be doing that on the next video. I'm also going to be doing something different on a new video where we're going to be looking at a, how, how to actually change and select the line. So let's say that you wanted to go here and hit play. And let's say that I draw, I draw a new line, right? But sometimes I, it would be nice if we could move that line around. So I implemented something like that on a different app that I created before. So I'm going to show you how we can select the line, move it around. We can, you know, we can change the mode from drawing to selection so that you can either draw or select the line if you wanted to move it. And I mean, in this case, it's not really helpful, but if you're doing that in AR, I think it could become really helpful because it could be that you draw, let's say that you draw a Christmas tree. You wanted to move that Christmas tree around. I think it'll be cool to have a feature like that, but you know what? That's for the most part. This is everything that I, you know, that I had. Let me just show you that I updated the repo and you guys can see some of the changes that I did there. And again, this is going to be in github.com Delmar V. And if you go into repositories and you're going to see AR draw right now, today is private. I'm going to make this available pu public tomorrow. And that's going to be around, I'm going to make it available around 9 a.m. MST. So just make sure that you look for that. And I also added more documentation on the readme file so you can see multiple drawing experiences. I also put a link in here to the first video so you guys could go into multiple videos if you want to watch the, free, the first video and then watch the second video. So the first video is going to have a link to the second one so you guys can look at that in, in sequence. And again, this is just, you know, multiple features in here that I have. Multi-touch drawing support, retackle feature, and then the different drawing experiences that I did to test this. So that's everything that I wanted to do, guys. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. Thank you. All right, guys, thank you for watching this video today. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about any of the drawing functionality that I just showed you, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out LearnXR.io, where I'm basically doing VR training, and I'm also going to be creating upcoming augmented reality training. If you have any other questions about LearnXR.io, let me know in the comments as well. And also, if you want any other code that I show you on this example, you can get it from GitHub tomorrow, which is going to be available for everyone, or you can get it today from Patreon. Thank you, guys.